Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Friday the 20th of January. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Johnny McFarlane. How are you getting on, Johnny? Good, mate. Yeah, good. Just having a quick sip of coffee. I was again up last night with my uh, young daughter, so Oof. feeling like I need to blow those cobwebs off. I think I've had about maybe six hours sleep in the last two nights. Bit of a nightmare. I don't have kids, folks. <laughs> Wise words uh, indeed. And um, before we talk all things uh, Rangers, folks, just a quick word for our sponsor, Seneca. You can see the their logo on your screen there. They are the number one hair transplant corporation in Europe uh, due to its elite hair restoration services and innovation techniques. To date, they've treated over 43,000 hairless sufferers, as they like to call it, uh, and they've restored their lost self-confidence. So they are the guys to look for, folks, if you're looking to uh, reinvigorate the top of your head. Uh, and I've stuck the links of uh, all the social media accounts and their website in the description box as well. So do go uh, check them out if that's something that you're, you're looking to do. Right, let's talk uh, Rangers, uh, Johnny. Um, let's talk, well, there's a couple of interesting pieces. Before we talk uh, transfers, because uh, such a, so much going on at the moment, uh, there's a, a great uh, couple of pieces on the website this morning. You've uh, spoken to James Bisgrove, who has given an update uh, not only on the, the the recently opened Blue Sky Lounge, which looks absolutely fantastic, um, but Edmonston House and a planned Rangers sports bar at Ibrox. Of course, the um, the empty club shop now, uh, but, but is uh, before uh, Edmonston House shortly opens it do- opens its doors. So plans are afoot to transform the space vacated when the the Castor Retail Centre moves into the brand new purpose built uh, building. Uh, Edmonston House, uh, between 500 and 600 fans, I believe, to be catered for in that space um, and where the, the, the shop uh, is at the moment. Uh, quite exciting plans, Johnny. Yeah, um, it's very exciting. And I spent a, a couple hours at Ibrox the other day just having a look at the new setup that, that, that is in place there, starting off with the Blue Sky Lounge, which is now open to, to punters, you can go up there, have your lunch uh, on a match day. It'll obviously become a, a part of the hospitality setup for the club. And let me tell you, it was fantastic. The food was excellent. I had a fish cake and then followed it, that up with a burger. You can see the burger on the uh, Twitter feed. And it was the, the, the food was just top notch, uh, Derek. And I think anyone who was going along with their family um, or for, with a couple of mates for a couple of pints, you get a wonderful view of of the Ibrox pitch and, and stadium itself. And it's just a cracking, a cracking visit. And obviously Rangers are running these uh, extras within the, the, the confines of the stadium in an attempt to make Ibrox a destination and uh, not just on match days, but outside of match days too. And whatever money they make from these kind of uh, innovations gets plowed back into making the team better. I've talked before about the fact that Celtic have a, a 10,000 advantage in terms of the seats in their stadium. And simply put, Derek, um, Rangers need to find ways of bringing in money so they can match that that shortfall, that obvious shortfall that's there. So all these sort of things that they're doing, uh, be it the Blue Sky Lounge, be it Edison House, which is coming on spectacularly, it's now looking very much close to completion. And I would imagine that, that there'll be an announcement on that at some point in the weeks ahead, because um, it's looking very, very close indeed. You just have to walk past that to see. Uh, these are the kind of things that are are going to help drive the club forward in the future. Uh, Emerson House, it can't be stressed enough. You know, it's, it's it's overrun. There's been delays. I think everyone understands the effect COVID's had on the building industry, Derek. And anyone who's tried to have any work done in their house will know that timber, that steel, that anything any any basically any resource has massively gone up in value alongside labor so so there's been a lot of issues to contend with but it's here now when i spoke to stuart robertson earlier in the year derek he told me quite clearly one million pounds a year is the target in terms of pure profit from emerson house so there's that element of it but there's another element too and it's about getting into the 20 the 21st century for supporters when they come to a match derek that you can come to the stadium footprint and actually enjoy and take your time, have a coffee. If you want to have a pint, have a pint. 
relax, be around other supporters and get into the atmosphere. Now, traditionally, that's been at other pubs around the stadium and in the area, and there are many good pubs to do that. But I think there'll be a lot of people who feel like they like the idea of their, the money they're spending going back into the club, and it's all part of the, the symbiotic nature of, of helping to grow the team, isn't it? Um, and yeah. the ability to have Edmondson House as a as an area that I think will, will hold around a 1,000 fans. I think the, 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 the whole building will hold about 1,700, including the shop and things like that. But a 1,000 people will be able to go into the bar area. You'll be able to sit, uh, stand there with your pals, have a drink. Uh, there'll be sports uh, on the TV, obviously. And that, that'll open at 11 o'clock in the morning uh, on a match day and close a couple hours. I don't think it's 100% decided when it'll close, but round about a couple hours after the uh, after the game finishes. So, so it's, it's, it, there's a lot of things going on there to be excited about. Yeah, certainly. And there's an interesting point that, that's come in from uh, Scott Kearney. Uh, he says, what about disabled uh, disability facilities? Well, uh, James Bisgrove uh, touched on that. Uh, it's in the piece, folks. Uh, I'll stick the link in uh, to the description uh, box shortly. Um, he says, as supporters and shareholders sought the AGM, there's a, a much broader plan in terms of the investment, in terms of accessibility and disabled seating that's in the pipeline for this year. One of the things that we're able to do in Blue Sky Lounge is create a new dedicated platform for supporters with accessible needs we can get six wheelchairs up there with carers as well so it's just starting to move in the right direction in terms of that broader plan in terms of accessibility uh this is much needed isn't it uh johnny i think uh, supporters have been um, crying out for this for, for, for some time so that, that, that's good to hear yeah absolutely and i was actually up on the disabled platform uh, that's been built as part of the blue sky route lounge only only keeps um uh, there's only enough room in there for, for, for six disabled supporters, but it's a, it's, a, it's a big platform, really big, but you need to have space for, for people's carers and things like that as well. Um, but it's a fantastic view, and obviously you're covered by the stand, whereas the current disabled area is, is, is leaving you very much open to the elements. It's just a start, Derek, but I think it's a very positive start. Uh, the club needs to be inclusive uh, for all, and, and this is a good way to move forward with that. It, Derek, as I was uh, sort of waffling on about the various things that I learned, the, the other thing that I think most people will be really excited about is that the minute that uh, Edmiston House opens its doors, as I say, which will, which is imminent, the club will then turn its attention to what used to be the Castor uh, shop, and that is getting turned into a sports bar. Plans are underway and will be accelerated the minute Edmiston House is finished. That space is actually bigger once once you open it all up than the club were thinking it would be. And they're fully expecting to be able to have between 500 and 600 fans in that sports bar um, for games. And I was told that the summer is the target for that. So I don't think it'll be a long-term project or anything like that. It wouldn't be taking a year and a half to get that sorted. You know, I think the building's in reasonably good nick. And while they're looking at various options and there may be that they may decide to, to, to take on a bigger project and extend it or whatever, but for the time being, I think that what they're looking at for that sports bar uh, is turning it over in a matter of months so that for next season, fans have got that space to go. And I say, if you want to go and get to the ground early, have a few pints with your mates, there might be a Premier League match on. Uh, that you can stand and watch and, and, and just enjoy the banter and, and, and watch the game ahead of the, the Rangers game itself in the stadium footprint, in the stadium confines. And I think, for me, uh, you know, if I was going along as a supporter, that would be a huge boon and something that I would absolutely want uh, to go and visit ahead of the game. So I think really exciting news there that, that that's going to be something that's going to be pretty much in place in, in a matter of months because... Yeah. It's a project, I think, that the that, that fans will be able to get behind. Yep, right. Let's talk uh, transfers. As Sean Martin says, uh, morning, guys. What's the latest transfer news? Uh, things seem to be uh, speeding up with regards to that, That Johnny. The Todd Cantwell move, uh, we believe, edging ever closer. He's to undergo a medical, as far as we're concerned, fee uh, reportedly has been agreed between both clubs. Of course, uh, David Wagner, the new Norwich City boss, has said that he's, he's free to speak to other clubs. Rangers... Uh, have uh, agreed a fee by all accounts and he is to undergo a medical. 
Uh, that is good news for me. I, I'm, I'm, I think that's, that, that'll be a, a good signing. I trust Michael Beale to, to get his career back on track. Uh, he has fallen away in the last couple of seasons. There is no doubt about it. On his day, he, he's a cracking player. I think that the Rangers fans is at the Norwich City podcast have told me we'll have to be a little bit patient with him. Um, I know that's easier said than done. Um, but this is a signing I'm quite excited about, Johnny. I'm excited about it as well, Derek. Um, I, it's all but done. Um, I expect it to be announced today, if not today, uh, then tomorrow ahead of the game. But, but you know yourself that these things tend to be announced on a, on a, on a weekday. Um, so I think Cantwell will be a, a really good signing for Rangers. I've looked at quite a lot of the, uh, the footage that's doing the rounds of him. And it's clear that we're talking about a player with high technical skills. Where I have... I kind of understand of why his career hasn't accelerated. Um, he's a player that seems to have struggled to find a fixed position. Yes. Uh, I noticed when you spoke to the Norwich City podcaster, who was excellent, and it, anyone who wants to know a bit more about Todd Cantwell should check that video out because there's a lot of detail in there. Yeah, He seemed to say that he hadn't really defined his position. He can play in a variety of positions, and that's both a strength and, and probably something of a curse to any player. Um, it definitely helps, I think, when you're um, you pinned down a certain position in the team and you can be relied upon to play that. But what is clear from the footage is that he's got a high technical quality level. There's no doubt about that. His ball control is superb. He's got very, very quick feet. He's not slow, Derek. I'm not saying he's lightning fast, but yeah. he is not slow. He can move. He's young. And he kind of fits the Beal prototype or archetype as someone who he can coach and bring back to his full potential. We're talking about an England under 21 international who was rated up to 30 million at one point. So while his career has gone off the rails in the last two or three years, I do think that there's a, there's a lot to suggest that this is a smart move and one that is perfectly pitched for a coach like Michael Beale to really get in about the player and bring him back to life almost, Eric. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to him get entering the building. Just a, a new face, I think, Johnny, more than anything else. I think supporters are just crying out for uh, a bit of freshness, uh, uh, a bit of bit, bit more energy. And I think Todd Cantwell has uh, the potential uh, to do that. Uh, I'm really excited about this signing. Other signings possibly in the pipeline. The Morgan Whitaker one is an interesting one. Uh, reportedly a second bid rejected for the Swansea forward. Michael Beale's answer uh, after the Kilmarnock game was interesting, saying he was unaware of a bid being made uh, for him, which, which was interesting. So th th there's something not quite right somewhere along the lines. Um, but certainly a player that, that impressed at Plymouth Argyle in the first half of the season. Uh, I'm actually hoping to speak to a, a well-known Plymouth fan uh, soon, folks, and, and we'll get his views up uh, shortly. But... Uh, is this one that you would like to to see pushed over the line, Johnny? By all accounts, is a player that wants to come up to Ibrox. I mean, if Michael Beale wants a player, then you've got to back the manager to go and go and get him. Basically, I, I don't know much about him. I, I, you can understand that League One English football is probably not my strong suit, Derek. Um, but from what I've seen and from what I've looked at in terms of the stats around this game. He's another one of these adaptable wingers that can play either side. He's got a goal in him. He's got uh, the ability to create. I think it's nine goals and seven assists in League One at the halfway point of the season. That's good numbers. And we've seen players come from that level before and be very impressive. You look at um, Joe Rebo, for example, across the city. We've seen the impact that's been made by um, Matt O'Reilly, who's, who's been excellent, I think, for Celtic. There's no reason why Whitaker can't add to that. The, the kind of physicality and the level of football on display in League, League One, I think, is pretty much of a standard of the Scottish Premiership. I don't think yeah. there's, there's any doubt about that. That's probably about where the average level is. All this, some big teams in that league, obviously. Um, and I think coming into a, a team like Rangers, where you're ball dominant, would give a player like Whitaker quite a lot of um, extra opportunity. But I can't say that I've sat here and watched them live, Derek. I can't say that I've sit, I can sit here and say, this is a nailed on guy. I mean, we had you very astutely talking about Tom Lawrence because you'd watched them in your work, your freelance yeah. work down south. 
So yeah. you're able to say, well, I've seen this guy three times. He's going to be a nailed on success at Rangers. I just know he will be because I've seen him. But yeah. I don't think any of us have that, that experience with Whitaker. So uh, I have spoken to a couple of contacts down there. I know, I know someone based in, uh, in Plymouth. And um, I, th- I think it's well known that he's the best player in that team um, so far this season. But he's been called back to Swansea. Swansea, it looks like to me, are playing hardball. Uh, I don't think they want to keep him. I think they've recalled him to sell him. And we'll see how that plays out. Now, the definitive answer on it will come at the weekend because if he's in the squad and he makes an appearance, then that's it. There is not going to be a transfer because you can't play for three clubs in a single season. No. So that will tell us everything about what Swansea are actually trying to do. And at that yeah. point, we'll know. It's as simple as that. Uh, do I think Rangers need a winger? Yes, I do. It's obvious they do. Um, Fashion Sakala, we've talked before, good player, great numbers, uh, up and down. I, Rangers haven't had a right wing option that has been convincing since Daniel Candias. And even then, you would say that Daniel Candias, when he was convincing, probably wouldn't get into this team now because the standards has risen in that time. Um, as much as I like Daniel Candias as a player, by the way, as a hard worker and a, and a, and a high quality uh, right winger, I think, uh, at this level. Yeah. So, I think it's a good signing if it works. Uh, but we've said before, Derek, any signings that Rangers have to make, Ross Walsh is under pressure to make sure they're ones that will come in and make a difference. So hopefully Morgan Whitaker, if that happens, is one that, that, that can do that. And the yeah. right wing is, is an area that needs strengthened. We all know that. Yeah, yeah. It's been yeah needing strengthened for, for a, a good few seasons now. Another player that's been heavily linked is uh, the Belgian attacking midfielder Nicolas Raskin. Standard Liège player. He's not played... Uh, for some time after a breakdown in his contract negotiations there, uh, according to reports in Belgium Rangers. In advanced talks with Standard Liège about a potential move, it's believed that Marseille and Toulouse uh, are also interested in him. Uh, He's a player I don't know much about, Johnny, I've got to admit. I've not seen much of him, but uh, by all accounts comes highly rated. I've seen a few uh, reports uh, on him. Uh, he's another one. If, uh, I mean, midfield, it's, it's it's an area of the pitch that Rangers have needed fresh blood for a, 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 some time now. So I would have no qualms about seeing this boy enter the enter Ibrooks. This is an exciting one for me, Derek. Twenty one years old, uh, comes from a, a a good pedigree as as a player that's been highly rated. He's had ups and downs under Ronnie Dyer. Let's put it uh, succinctly. Um, he's been banished, I think, to the B team, and you'd have to imagine they won't be too difficult to deal with in terms of a transfer fee because he's got six months less than his deal and he's not contributing to the first team. So that's one that you would you would think would be fairly straightforward on that front. I think it's complicated by the fact there is serious interest from across the continent in this player. And Rangers will have achieved a coup if they manage to persuade him. There's been long-term interest in this, in this man. There's no doubt about that. That's been going back a long time, I think, first heard rumblings about this 12 months ago. So he is someone that I think um, the club have had an eye on for a while. And at 21, Derek, he gives you that, um, I think he's 21, he might be 22, but if you can check that if I'm wrong. But at 21, um, as as I think he is, he gives you that level of legs and that ability to grow. You know, you could have three years and then move on to to big things. It fits into the club's ideology of bringing them in and then selling them on for a big profit. So I like the look of that. 21 for Raskin. I think Todd Cantwell, is he 24? Yes. And and, and that gives you a, a, a completely different definition in terms of the, the, the overall uh, age of that midfield, doesn't it? And, and both high-quality technical players. Raskin, Derek, is a, is a, is a deep-lying midfield player yeah. um, who can create from the base of the midfield. He's got a good passing range. Um, where he might struggle in Scotland, and I'm just going to be honest in terms of what I've seen, he's not a physical player. He's not got. He's he's quite diminutive. He's not a he's not a, a tall guy who's going to challenge for headers. Um, so I think to be able to live in the the physical environment he's going to face up here, and we all know we see it week in week out that it's unforgiving. No prisoners are taken. He will have to be technically very good. You see it with a player like. Um, like Glenn Kamara, who's got a very, very high technical skill set, I think. Um, he's also got physicality. I don't think Raskin has got that. So, really, 
it will be about him being levels above the players that he's against and imposing that quality on games. Having seen him, I'm excited. I think he can do that. I think it would be a, a real, real coup for the club if this gets over the line. Um, this is the kind of player Rangers have been needing for a long, long time, Derek. Adam Thornton, friend of the show, has been talking about this since the Rangers review started. He wrote an article about why Joey Veerman would be would be huge um, as an addition to the midfield at the start of last season. And I think Raskin brings a lot to the table, similar to Veerman, in terms of what the modern kids would call uh, a kind of, I was going to say verticality to the play. It's, it, it, that's probably wrong. What I mean is moving the ball quickly through the thirds. If you've got a player with high pass and accuracy who can get that ball a second faster than the players around them, it's the sort of thing that disrupts a block and Rangers we know faces that block week in, week out. And having a guy like that who can create from deep, I think brings a completely new dimension to the Rangers side. Yeah, uh, Stuart Ballantyne gets in touch and says, hey, Johnny had the most interceptions in Belgium before Ronnie puts him down in the reserves. And then CGM rightly says, 55 says, Raskin's an essential defensive midfield, not an attacking midfielder. Thanks for that, that correction, buddy. Um, but I say, just, I, I, I was, no, that was not my intention to say he was an attacking midfielder. No, it was me that said it. It was me that said it. So. Um, uh, this is an interesting point. It ties in with a piece from uh, Stevie Clifford on the website this morning, Johnny. Mad Dog gets in touch. Why are we signing three attackers um, when our defence is leakier than a sieve? Um, I've got to say, Stevie's piece, he's not convinced by Ben Davis, shall we say, uh, as yet. Uh, I, I, I've got to say, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ben Davis. I think he's been good. He just offers that calmness on that left-hand side. Um, I've been impressed by him thus far. I think he was going to get better, as his former Preston teammate told me, the more games he gets uh, in that partnership with Connor Goldson will improve. There's no doubt about Rangers have lost uh, uh, poor goals of late Hamden, of course, uh, and at Rugby Park, they started poorly. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's all Ben Davis's fault. I know that the offside goal at Hamden, uh, he, was, he was partly to blame for that one. But in the main, I, I've been pretty satisfied with Ben Davis. Um, would you go along with that? Yes, mate, I would. I, I like Ben Davis. I disagree with Stevie on this one. I know where he's coming from because he's not a dominant uh, aerial defender. And there will be times in the SPFL against teams that, that go long and look to disrupt Rangers in that way. They'll target that about Ben Davies. But I think most of the time, what Rangers need is a progressive central defender who can move the ball quickly, getting back to that thing again. And I think he gives you that. Uh, Philip Hellander for me added to Rangers in terms of getting the ball out from the back because just simply because he was left footed it's not particularly good on the ball or anything like that but just by being able to take the ball on his correct side and move it out to Barisic that split second quicker I think it made a difference than when Balogun was playing for example um, so I think Ben Davies will be fine at Rangers he'll settle in he he is a guy that, that I don't I, necessarily think will we'll, we'll relish going up against the big physical strikers in Scottish football. You know, that's that's not really his game. Hopefully, Conor Goldson can do that. And that leaves Ben Davies to, to, to do what he does best, which is bring the ball out um, and, and knit everything together at the back. Um, but I, I've just not really seen anything from Ben Davies that worries me too much. I get what Stevie's saying about in the last couple of games, but I think there's been multiple errors in these goals. Don't think it's like a specific Davis only problem. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, he, he just needs a bit more time to get used to the club, to get used to the, the team, the style of play. And I just think he's he's going along quite smoothly, personally. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Although, I mean, there is comment. There's uh, some comments out there that in, in support of Stevie. To be fair, uh, Jim McCarroll yeah. says I agree with Stevie. Don't think Davis is any better than Katic. Uh, Pete Lawrence says uh, Davis is still finding form. Not finished article uh, yet. Um, Do you know what? He's not better than Katic in the air, but he's better than Katic on the ball. Oh, that's well, so, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, and that's. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? With with modern football, I mean, like Nikola Katic. If you're talking about going up against the Kilmarnock centre forwards. I mean, he'd be much better. There's no doubt about that. And um, that's a, that's a spot on observation. Um, but over the course of a, of a, of a 60 game season, would 
what's what's more valuable for Rangers, the ability to bring the ball out quickly from the back, or the ability to to take control of a six foot four centre half and dominate them in the way Richard Goff used to, or Lorenzo Amoroso used to, or I mean, let's be honest, many Rangers centre halves going back even further than that have always been. Um, that's always been a, a key facet of their game, but the game's changed a little bit in that regard. I'm not saying it's not useful, um, but I think part of it is going to be being able to spark attacks because, you know, teams sitting deep and you have to be able to progress the ball through the thirds quickly. Yeah, uh, Ian McPhee says, it's all about opinions. It surely is, uh, Ian, he says, but Davis is not physical enough yeah. for me. And uh, Adam Thornton gets in touch in one. And Adam, uh, the partnership of Golton overall complements each other well. More support in midfield will also reduce the pressure on the defence. I've got I've got to agree with that one. Uh, as we touched on earlier, the Rangers midfield, as everyone knows. I don't like to agree with Adam, to be fair. But, no, I know, you know but he's spot on, this on one, there, I, I think. feel like I have it's, to. It's, it's hard to disagree with, with regards uh, to that one. We all know the midfield needs it. Needs <laughs> needs boosted, um, and David Andrews says uh, Davis is fine. He will win uh, people over. Yeah, like I say, I, I, I've been quite ha- satisfied with him. I think he's been good. Um, that defense just looks more robust. I know it's uh, uh, me saying that after losing uh, the, the goal against Kilmarnock and Aberdeen sounds a bit daft, but I think in the main, him and goals yeah. and, uh, have sp- sparked up a pretty decent partnership. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those. It's not a mad shout, is it? I mean, like I, th- I read it and. Stevie's piece, and I thought to myself, that there's a, that's a cogent argument, and you see a lot of people on Twitter this morning say, saying they agree with it. And I think you can take it, you can take from the evidence that we've had so far either position, and it'd be valid. Yeah. But we'll only know in another twelve games who's right or who's wrong, um, and, and 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 we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah, and there's an interesting point that they came in here. Uh, I wanted to touch on it uh, by Hugo Bear. He says, uh, the problem with our defence is the fullbacks. Um, lots of comments coming in about uh, the former Borna Barisic and James Tavenier, Johnny. Um, is the problem the fullbacks? Well, it is, and I think Michael Beale would agree with that, but that's a deliberate problem, Derek. You know, mm. uh, he, he said it himself, he's pushing the fullbacks forward yeah. and it's going to leave holes, and it's... You look back to the Stephen Gerrard era, I thought Rangers were set up superbly to deal with the covering of those fullbacks. It's been a problem ever since James Tavernier walked through the door, as you've got this incredible attacking fullback who'll give you unbelievable assists, unbelievable goals um, for, for a right back. But, you know, while he's bombing forward and playing like a right winger, there's going to be space for teams to exploit. And it's a cost benefit analysis. Is it worth what he gives you going forward to lose what you're losing at the back. I think a lot of the criticism, I don't think it's often uh, James Tavernier's fault. I think it's the way, you know, he's been deployed. And But I totally understand the way he's been deployed and that's how I would deploy him. You yeah. know, I, I think you, you've just got to, you've got to put him like, uh, in that position where he's high up the pitch and he can, he can, he can cause problems. It's not like they're not tracking back. Uh, it's more just that, you know, they're caught in a position where they can't get back fast enough. That said, and I, I'm aware that me saying all what I've just said there is probably going to get me slaughtered in the comments, I don't <laughs> think either of them are playing well, Dick. Uh, fundamentally, neither of them are in great form. Tavernier, I would say, is in average form, but Borna Barisic has not been good in the last couple of games. And the quicker you can get Rid van Yilmaz back to put him under a bit of pressure, he looks yeah. like his confidence dropped a little bit uh, once again. And we know what Borna's like with this. Um, he's a confidence player. When he's yes. firing, he's excellent. And when he's not, it goes the other way. Yeah, yeah. A uh, comment coming in here. Uh, first of all, I like this, uh, Mr. Horses. He says, no enough tracky-backy. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with you there. And uh, Stephen Gillespie says, uh, divine for me over either of the current two on either side. Great player, let's use him. Uh, he has been coming on of late, hasn't he, Adam Devine? And, and yeah, you, I don't think uh, Tav or Barisic uh, could have too many uh, complaints if they dropped out at some point for, for young Adam Devine. I, I want to see more of him, I've got to admit. What, what was brilliant last season, Derek, before uh, Nathan Patterson departed, was that you had the fullbacks under serious pressure. Because, well, I mean... Calvin Bassey, you sucked Borna at one point, didn't he, as a, as a first-choice left-back? There wasn't much doubt about it before he moved inside to, to central defence. Um, and over the other side, 
you knew that if James Tavernier wasn't absolutely at his best, Nathan, Nathan, Tavern, Nathan Patterson was going to come in and take his place. I think you need to get Yilmaz back. I'd be amazed if Rangers didn't consider Ridvan Yilmaz the number one left back going forwards, especially in the long term. We'll find out, obviously, in the months ahead, once he gets himself back and he's now, given he's now more settled in the country and more settled in understanding the football and what's expected. But Borna Barisic, as I've said, is a streaky player. People are talking about his assists, and his assists are good. I think he's he's yeah. second in the league or, 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 or joint first with Matt O'Reilly for assists. I think it's seven or something like that. So he's still creating. You saw his cross for the, the third goal at... Uh, in the midweek game there, and uh, you know he, he's found Mariel lost his head. Yes, it takes a slight deflection, but he still put the ball in a dangerous area that has caused problems. And there's no doubt to me, Barisic has got the best left foot in Scottish football. I mean, it's as simple as that. When it comes to putting crosses in the box, there's no one better. But there's other aspects to his game that I think uh, can be a bit flaky. And, and 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 I like him as a player, but I don't think he's in great form at the moment. Yeah, um, there's a good few players that aren't in great form, but they're getting results at the moment, and that's all that matters at, at this point. Uh, Ali Quinn says, how far away is Yilmaz? Uh, I think Michael Beale told us last week uh, it was another three to four weeks away, yeah. so probably about two to three weeks away now, uh, Ali. Um, whether he's back for the St. Johnston game, well, he won't be, and that's next week. No, he won't be. No, no. Um, so you're talking mid-February, I think, before... Uh, we possibly see Yilmaz back in, in a Rangers jersey, but um, yeah, hopefully a speedy recovery to him because Rangers have uh, missed him, I think, especially down that, that left-hand side. It'll be interesting when he does get back fit. Uh, it will be a selection headache for uh, the manager with regards to that, but the more selection headaches he has, the better for me. Um, okay, I think that'll do us there. The press conferences this afternoon, folks, uh, we'll speak to uh, a Rangers player and Michael Beale ahead of a huge game tomorrow, uh, Johnny. Um, the Scottish Cup, the, the Cups pre uh, present Rangers' best opportunity of silverware this season. Scottish Cup, of course, you want to um, uh, defend it um, uh, in St Johnston. Not in a, a great run of form at the moment, but anytime Rangers go up there, it, it, it's not. It's generally not not a classic, uh, and I expect this to be another one of those ones where roll up the sleeves. Fingers crossed uh, that they don't concede an early goal this time. Yeah, just before I answer that, Derek, I've noticed um, I did call um, Nicholas Raskin diminutive earlier on. And it's been pointed out to me that he's nearly five foot ten. So now, listen, I need to put. I'm I'm nearly six foot three, so I think everyone's small if they're smaller than me. But I was yeah. watching a game where he was surrounded by clearly people well over six foot because he looked a bit small on that. But um, so yes, I've got that wrong. He is not diminutive. Five foot ten is not diminutive. It is perfectly normal. In fact, it's probably above average. So. Hands up on that one. Um, in terms of the game, St. Johnson, it's a very interesting one, Derek. I mean, there's been a lot of controversy. We've kind of not touched on it on these daily briefs, but um, the St. Johnson well, fans of, are yeah. literally in revolt about this game. Um, yeah. I mean, I know these can understand why. Yeah, and you can understand why. I mean, I think the last I heard, there was around about 350 or something like that tickets that had been sold yeah. for the whole game for St. Johnson. Um They've got the main stand. Rangers have got the other three. Um, and, and they're really not happy about that decision. The St. Johnson fans, I, I think there's a... Derek, for, for me, I've got to be honest about this. Um, the same fans will be criticising St. Johnson for not spending enough in transfer windows. You know, these things are cause and effect. If, if St. Johnson can't sell out those stands to their own fans, then I think they're entitled to look after and safeguard the financial future of their club and get as much money as they can. And that makes sense because that helps them. Yeah. Now, listen, I know and understand from a St. Johnson fan's point of view, um, they have to split the takings with Rangers. So it's not as much perhaps as it would be in a league game. The so you're only maybe talking about 30, 40, 50,000 or something like that that they'll gain from this. And by losing all those Saints fans, they've lost a fair bit as well. But I just think that, you know, it's it, 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 it's, it's, it's a financial issue, as, as yeah. Robert Robertson's saying there. I mean, they're trying to maximise what they can get in. And if St. Johnson fans came out and supported their team in larger amounts, then the club wouldn't have to do that. It's... 
it's one of those ones. It's a difficult pill for them to swallow, but that's prudent management of their finances. And there's a reason that St. Johnston have five million pounds in the bank. And it's because that over the last 35 years or whatever of the Brown family's reign, uh, and, and I, I grew up in Perth, so I know them quite well in terms of uh, what they've done over the years. You know, it's because they, they've really, really run that club brilliantly. So it's interesting that that basically it's going to be like a home game and then some um, at McDermott Park, and that that's got to be a big a big uh, boost for Rangers going into that one. It's never easy. We saw the last time that that, that the club visited; it was a defeat, and I, I always find that it's 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 not a great park to play on. I, I can't think of many games that have been brilliant there, Derek. Always a bit of a battle of attrition, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I would imagine Rangers to win that game, maybe. 2-0 two, two or 2-1. I don't think it'll be a, a game where they storm over the top of the Perth Saints, but I think they'll get through. Yeah, of course, lost there under Van Bronckhorst in, back in November. So um, we do know they're going to be up for it. It's their cup final uh, and it's up to Rangers to uh, uh, maintain that unbeaten run under Michael Beale. We'll just finish with this, uh, Johnny, when you were talking about <laughs> diminutive. John Park says... Great things come in small packages. <laughs> uh, so, so. He's not small, John. He's not <laughs> small. He's average. <laughs> As the commenters are telling me. Yeah, lots of lots of players be, being mentioned that are, 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 are average height, uh, shall we say. Um, but yeah, crack, cracking interaction as always, folks. Thanks very much to everyone that's tuning into the programme. Just a, uh, a quick uh, mention for our promotional offer we've got on the website just now. Just £2 for two months worth of content. You can see the little ticker below. Head on over to rangersreview.co.uk. Uh, forward slash subscribe for all the details and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, almost hitting the 11,000 subscribers on there, so thank you very much to each and every one of you, um, yeah, that's easy to do, it's free also uh, and you can click the little, little bell so it means that you should never miss a video when we go live I think uh, Joshua will be at the game for us tomorrow is that right Johnny? That's correct, Joshua is travelling to Perth, very close to his hometown of Pitlochry yeah, um, I think uh, Josh's dad's actually the club chaplain at St Johnson as well. So uh, wow. I think he's got some uh, some family ties to the club. Um, so he'll be there uh, and uh, reporting back on what happens. We'll hopefully see a really really good game and uh, maybe by the end of it we'll we'll have him on the video talking about Rangers victory. Yeah, fingers crossed. Right, folks, that'll do us there. As I mentioned earlier on, press conference later, so we'll have all the reaction to that on the website and our social media channels. Uh, I'll be back again on Monday. Uh, but so until then, uh, hope your team wins tomorrow and enjoy.